Welcome to this week's edition of In the Clubhouse with EMD. I'm Andy Kirikides, joined by my co-host, Coach Keith Glasser. How are we doing this afternoon, Coach? Great. How are you? Good. Today's topic is find ways to compete. We're creeping up on the high school season. College baseball is uh, either, depending on when this gets released, either underway or very close to starting. And one of the things that we always emphasize as college coaches that I think is really translatable to high school guys as you start to prepare for your seasons is we're always trying to find ways to make guys compete, whether it's uh, a super targeted batting practice round or some sort of a point system during a bullpen. Competition is really important because we've talked about this a little bit in the past that baseball is a really hard game to get the juices flowing that you get in a true game setting. Uh, It's not like basketball where you can go play pickup or you can scrimmage and practice. Like It's a little bit different. So those elements of competition and getting guys into that compete mindset are really important. And as high school players, as you get in, as you get closer and closer to your high school season, You've done the vast majority of your development work. You've done your weight training. You've built up your arm to the point where you're starting to throw bullpens. Like you've taken all the swings that you need to take. Now you need to start to swip, flip the switch a little bit and find ways that you can compete on a day in and day out basis. And that's what we're going to talk about for the next couple of minutes. So take it away, coach. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things, especially if you're, you know, a Northeast Midwest kid is figuring out how to, you know, kind of break the monotony of being inside from a, a baseball standpoint, you know, as us Northeast guys and, and college guys, like we've been through the ringer when it comes to trying to get prepped for a, a baseball season inside, it's, it's not the easiest thing to be able to do. But, you know, I think you know, as you start to ramp up, like being able to be a little bit more locked in on bullpens, you know, maybe some pressure bullpens where, you know, Hey, you're, you're telling yourself you're in certain counts and you got to make certain pitches to get guys out. Um, you know, doing some fielding work, doing some picks and holding runners. You know, the other thing from a hitting standpoint, I think, you know, trying to get as many live at bats or at least live looks that you possibly can, you know, if guys are throwing bullpens, see if you can stand in and get some, you know, track some baseballs, you know, try to get as many live at bats as you can and take them seriously because those live at bats that you can take super early are going to shorten the learning curve for when you actually get into the season. Um, you know, and defensively, I, I you know, I, I think you can try to make up, you know, obviously take your reps and do the things you need to do, but you know, I, everyone knows this, right? Like you can take put ground balls off gym floor. It's not the same as taking on a field. Like everybody knows that. You know, but you can you can create some stuff within your team and within your teammates uh, of some games you can make up to try to, you know, really just compete and, and get better at selling out for balls. And, you know, I, I think that it goes a really long way, you know, and, and we used to play BP live when I was at RPI from time to time and Sienna and everything like, you know, guys would sell out for balls. And, and, you know, when you start getting used to selling out for balls, whether it's in a practice setting or BP or in a gym, it starts to become second nature. And I can tell you, it means a lot to pitchers, especially in games, if you sell out for a ball. And even if even if you miss it, you know, like, hey, I, you're, you're a foot away. But when you sell out for that ball, pitchers are a lot more apt to turn around and be like, all right, man, my defense is selling out for everything it is I'm doing. I have to bear down a little bit more for these guys here because they're selling out for me. I got to sell out for them. And you start being able to, to build this culture of people selling out and trying to win and do everything it does to take to do that. And it starts with just, you know, focus and, and competing in bullpens and competing in live at bats and competing in, you know, some defensive stuff that you make up and, you know, really trying to break up that monotony of what you're doing inside. And I, I think that it's, it's paramount for kids to be able to kind of learn that at a young age. And, you know, one, it, it gets you to compete in, in a lot of stuff, but two, you know, it breaks up the, taking a thousand ground balls off a of gym floor and making some throws like you, you can inject some fun into it and, and really be able to start to compete with your boys. Heck yeah. I mean, if you're the other thing too, is try to try to get some of the game reps too. Like if you're a hitter and you got a buddy who's throwing a bullpen, like go stand in. Like, why wouldn't you want to stand in? Like get some pitches that you can see, start tracking pitches, start working on timing. Like, you know, that stuff can go a long way as you start to see pitches and you get yourself ready for the season. Like if you're throwing your bullpen, 
have a script, have a plan, um, start mixing in at bats into your bullpen, you know, start to throw sequences. You're not just going in there to, to feel good all the time. Like sometimes you need to get up there and you need to compete with yourself. Um, if you're a hitter, start dialing up the velocity, start putting yourself in situations that are uncomfortable. Um, batting practice is, is all good. Like I, I, I'm a firm believer that you want to have those feel good rounds. I'm a firm believer that you want to have a solid T work routine that gets you into your front toss or to your flips and then get you into some batting practice. But eventually you need to start to challenge yourself and you need to get out of that comfort zone of making sure that every time you go into the batting cage that you feel good. Sometimes you need to go and put yourself in an environment that's a little bit more competitive. Um, and start mixing that stuff in. It's time to prepare yourself for the season. It's time to prepare yourself to go and compete and to win games. You know, I know everybody, we're here to help kids get recruited and we're here to talk about a lot of the pieces of the puzzle that are important when it comes to the recruiting process. But the ability to compete never, never gets old. Like it's a trait that coaches are looking for. And the more times that you can put yourself in situations where you're forced to be competitive and you're put in uncomfortable situations, uh, the better you're going to be in the long run. And, you know, ultimately when you get into your high school season, like, you're there to compete and win games. And if you can start to ramp that up and to your point, Keith, like if you can make it fun, like that's even better, right? If you can go out and compete with a smile on your face, like that's pretty much the, that's the best case scenario. Um, you know, so find ways to do it, find ways to get yourself out of that. You know, I don't want to call it stale, but get yourself out of the, the pure reps where you're just trying to make yourself feel good, like start to do some stuff that's going to challenge yourself and, you know, find some people that you can go do it with that are super competitive too. Nothing wrong with a little bit of trash talk, nothing wrong no, with, with really? pushing your, pushing your teammates and, and, and making sure that there's a presence there and that you got some people that are, that are pushing you. Like, that's a good thing. Um, you know, so try to find that environment and, you know, some facilities and, and some coaches are really good at creating that. So if you're in one of those facilities that has a super competitive environment, like good for you, like that's awesome because you're probably got a leg up on everybody else. But, you know, if you're a kid who has to go and kind of do a lot of stuff on your own, like go find people to work out with, go find people to get at bats with, go find people to stand in and, and you know, get, get some pitches thrown at you from a bullpen perspective, like play a hit game in the batter cage, like, hard hit balls. Like there's a million different ways you can slice and dice it. Like kids get creative um, and go have fun with it. Like play wiffle ball. I don't care. Play wall ball where, you know, with a tennis ball. And if you make an error, they get to peg you. Like. I, you know, I love wall ball. Oh, what a great, great game. What a great game. Great game. We used to, I used to do that with our infielders when we had to go inside because it was, it was a, it was a good way to get them to do stuff from an athletic perspective that took them away from the monotony of what we would usually do in practice and get them to have a little bit of fun with it. Right. Like challenge yourself with a wall ball where, Hey, you got to catch every second hop. Yeah. So you got to move your feet. You got to do some different stuff. Like everything has to be a backhand or everything has to be a run through um, doing stuff like that. It's a blast. You get a space where you can make mistakes doing difficult things and it's okay, but you're also challenged in yourself. And if you can find a way to have some sort of a consequence to it, um, like 10 push-ups, or you got to run a sprint or I don't know, like whatever, like whatever you don't like doing, make that the consequence and then go have fun with some buddies and compete and laugh a little bit and just have fun and enjoy doing that. And also know that you're probably getting better. Yeah, it's the best part. I, you know, it's, but I, I, to your point, like, I, I think it, you know, it, it breaks up the monotony. And I think sometimes, you know, I, I started getting away from it a little bit when I was at uh, the back end of my coaching career was, you know, just making up time wasters when you're inside, trying to just fill time. You know, I thought there was a lot more value. And, you know, there were some days where I would just, I would literally on the spot make up some stupid competition just to, just to compete. And guy, like, our guys loved it because we would like, you know, everyone would just start talking trash to each other and it was fun to go through. But like when you get, you start competing on stuff, like that's when, you know, you can, there's a little bit of added pressure. There's some, there's some stuff going on. You're adding a little bit more into it than, than what you would normally get out of a practice. So 
you know, I, I, one day I remember making up a comment, like we had hurdles involved. You were going up and over and you're fielding baseballs, you're throwing things to targets, like, and they progressively got smaller. Like, it, and, you know, my point system was always like, uh, you know, what's that? What was that? Show? MXC. Remember that show <laughs> for, for all the young kids out there? You yeah, yeah. It. And it was a, it was a, a I, I don't even know what it was, but it was a dubbed, it's a dubbed game show. Um, where they did these wild games, but that like, it was, you know, wasn't that crazy. But my point is like, you know, my point system was like them. It was like, ah, this guy gets a thousand points and this team gets 700 points. Like it was just whatever, but it was more so, you know, to, to be able to compete. And you know, when you can kind of break up the, the drill session and the BP and the amount of swings and, you know, the, especially on some of those live days, like you go inside live, especially at the college level. And I know I'm getting a little off track, but those days are long. Oh like yeah, they, they can get pretty long. So like to be able to kind of break it up and get guys to compete, like you know that the whole point is like especially at the high school level, it can bleed through. Like find some stuff to do if you're you know instead of standing around doing nothing, find a you know make up some game and compete with your boys and you know have some fun with it. We Murph was always good at coming up with ways. Um, he's the head coach at Merrimack now, but he's the guy I worked for William Mer. He was always really good at having a feel for when we needed one of those days. Like even during the season, to just be like, hey, like we don't like it's a Thursday travel day. Like we just need some reps. We need everybody to feel good. Like he had such a re- he had such a good feel for when to do it, but he also had some really good ideas of like how do we make it competitive but also fun. And the one that sticks out and won't get too long winded with this, but we broke the hitters up into four teams, and we did a hard hit round to finish out BP. So you got the pitchers out in the outfield and they're having a freaking blast because there's no outfielders getting in the way and they're running around like idiots trying to catch everything. So they're having fun. So that was good. Uh, but it was break the hitters up into four teams of four. I think we had 16 guys, 16 hitters at the time. And we did hard hit rounds, but everything was on a clock. So I think it was like each team had two minutes to hit as many hard baseballs as they could. But the thing was, is that if you got into the cage and you, you miss hit a ball, the next guy had to come in. So they're like flying in and out of the cage, sprinting around the back end of the cage to get in line so that if a guy miss hit a ball, they could get in the cage real quick. And it got to the point where they're yelling at me because I'm not throwing pitches fast enough. So I'm I'm picking balls up out of the bucket, just throwing as many balls as I can. And they're hitting balls and dudes are it, it was just like a blast. And the funny thing was, is the batting practice quality ended up being really good. The intent was awesome. Everybody's smiling. Everybody's talking a little bit of a, a little bit of trash. You got guys screaming, "Murph, that's not a hard hit ball!" Like, no, oh, no yeah. you can't give him that the, point. The amount, the amount of players that'll like, oh yeah, oh, uh, like, especially we, when they hit him off the cage, stuff like that. Oh yeah, we do stuff like that, and I'm like, I'm so judge, fun. jury, and executioner in this. And then I'm like, nope. And all of a sudden, like the entire team just has a meltdown. And then like, you know, the next guy who's supposed to come in is arguing with me. And I'm like, you guys are losing time. Like, yeah. Ah, what are you doing? We had so much fun with that. And I think that if you're a kid right now, like 15, 16 years old, like don't forget this is supposed to be fun and you can make it super competitive and you can have a ton of fun doing it. Yeah. And I, I think the other piece too, like uh, this is the last thing I'll, I'll say on this, but you know, Farish would do this and I, you know, I know he got it from wake and I, you know, PD does this. We were talking about this the other day um, with the twins. Like, you know, there's days where instead of doing the same old boring PFP stuff, like he'd roll our pitchers out the short and play knockout and, you know, do stuff like that. Like one, it promotes a little bit more athleticism and two, like, you know, he would like, he would have rules of like your feet have to be on the dirt. You know, like you can't you can't just keep backing up into the outfield or you're out. Like you have to make a decent throw to first base, you know, stuff like that. But it was like, you know, all of a sudden you have 15, 16 pitchers out there and like they're playing like you get down to like six, seven, like first guys out, like everyone's just on that guy. And then like you get down like four or five and like all of a sudden, like it, it ramps up a little bit and guys start, you know, hey, don't miss this one. Like eh, you're going to be out, you know, yeah. like, it, you know. You had a little bit of pressure and like at the same time, like it, we got better at fielding PFPs when we like at fielding our position from a position, a pitcher standpoint, because we did that stuff a little bit more, promotes a little bit more athleticism, but it adds that compete factor to where, Hey, I got to stick. I, I got to field this bunt and get an out. Like it, it's not like you're not 
panicking in those moments. You know, it, it, it makes it a little bit better. It's all translatable. So I think that like, you know, being able to do stuff like that, even if there's coaches out there listening, like it's worth doing and thinking about. Have fun and compete. I think that's a good way to, to end this one. So yeah. thanks for listening, everybody. Tune in next week. We'll talk to you then. Thank you for listening this week. If you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and smash that like button for us. Check us out on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, as well as Spotify. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at EMD Baseball. If you want to find out what me and Keith do to help families and players navigate the recruiting process, go ahead and check us out on emdbaseball.com. Take a few minutes to check out our new online academy. I promise you'll get some good information out of that. Thanks again for listening. Check in with you next week.